Guys, uh, I'm back here at Toll Puddle again. This will be one of my final, well, second to last interviews. I'm um, with the National Education Union. I've got a representative called Debbie. Um, she, they represent teachers? Teachers and support staff. And support staff. So we are the biggest of the education unions. Oh, yeah. Okay, all right. So that's, that's, that's cool to know because I've... Every teachers... day to school day. That's true. <laughs> um, you learn something every day. And more importantly, the, the, you know, how do you find Toll Puddle? Absolutely loving it. Uh, it's the first time I've done the entire weekend. Mm. I will definitely do the entire weekend next time. Um, when you come on a Sunday, you think you're having the best of days, but actually the whole event is fantastic. It's just great to be amongst like-minded people from all different sectors, but we've actually got the same and it's true because I've met quite a few different, uh, well, you'll see from the interviews how many people I've met. Um, and all of them have said things that are different to the narrative that a lot of the mainstream media, especially from the right wing, have pushed out. Now, you guys are representing teachers and, and support, support staff. Yeah. And education, just in general, is having a massive attack on it. Absolutely. Um, you know, from, from funding being cut, uh, child poverty, you guys are not just teaching, but you're also acting in more ways a holistic social worker. We are supporting the families in our, in our communities in ways I've been teaching since 98 and I now am not just an educator, it, it's looking after their welfare, as you said, it's a holistic approach now and unfortunately one of the biggest problems we face and this is something I shared when we had the discussion on the fight against child poverty, for me in my setting, I've got a whole, what we call an inclusion team, so we look after the welfare of the families, um, if we can look after those kind of barriers, then the barriers to learning come down, the children can just focus on their education. Um, last week, four of us, who should have been also teaching, because that is our job, had to almost tag team to get help for one of our families, who we found out is a single man with a nine-year-old child who's basically moving from sofa to sofa because she's homeless. Her child's in school every day because she knows it's important for him to learn and through the day she's been fighting, trying to get help. She came to us in desperation so my team of four between us as well as teaching, we were then tag teaming so we could make relevant phone calls. By the end of the day we managed to get somebody to listen because we were the lead professionals. But then Ofsted are holding us accountable for the education of these children. We, we are plugging the gap in the welfare system as well as the education. And Ofsted also bring in and want to know what we're doing for these children that are classed as what we call pupil premium. Yeah. It's the disadvantaged families. That's what we're doing. But all Ofsted want to know is what are we doing to get the progress in their education results. And I did see one of the bugs that you guys have got, which is saying replace Ofsted. Yes. So, you know, why is that? That actually caught me off guard and made me want yes. to talk to you guys. Why has that come about? We, we have no problem with being held accountable for how we educate, how well we educate. What we have a problem with is what the focus that Ofsted have when they come in. They... They don't look at the big picture, they don't understand the context. You've got a school in a socially deprived area which is being held accountable in exactly the same way as a school in a leaky suburb. And, you know, the, one of the other things that's come out over the last two years, schools have never been closed, despite the narrative and the right wing press. But we were juggling remote learning, virtual learning, we also were having the children of all the key workers in schools. Yeah. So we were doing uh, a very unusual approach to education that we had to learn on the job. Um, and we feel we did a good job under the circumstances. And these children have had a very different education for the last two years. And the narrative coming out of Ofsted is you can't use COVID as an excuse. We don't want to use COVID. So you have to understand that if the government can say there is no money because of COVID, if the government can say there are waiting lists in the NHS because of COVID, and the 
it's understood in all the other sectors that there are problems as a result of COVID. It wasn't day to day as normal for us through COVID. No, it wasn't. It was but we provided what we could and we learned from March the 23rd, that was it. We were in and how were we going to educate the children? The funny thing is, you know, and again, just for me personally saying this, there's no point banging pots and pans and you know, <laughs> shaking, you know, pots and pans don't pay the bills. They, they, yeah, because the, exactly, they didn't pay the bills. We were heroes, you know, all the guys who were yeah. here from the unions were we, all the guys that worked through the pandemic. We never wanted the tag of heroes. Yeah. Well, you guys are naturally heroes anyway because it's teachers. So that's me, my personal. Thank you very opinion. much. Much very much appreciated. What we want is a fair day's pay for the job we do. There are educators that are employed in the yeah. That should not be happening. Oh, no, I know. And and it's also retaining highly educated, very talented staff who are now going across to either private industries and different, yeah. different sectors or going abroad because they know they can get the money. The numbers of teachers who leave the profession in their first five years of their career is going like that. Yeah, and, and that is... And it was a job for life previously. I mean, again, I, I've said this previously, I was going to become an educator at one point, but I'm glad I didn't, you know. But it... I, I'm but sorry to say it that way. everything I'm saying, I... Have the best job in the world. Yeah, it's not just that. The reason why I didn't become it was because I didn't have maths the GCSE. <laughs> and so they, didn't, they stopped me from going to teach a training course. So that's the reason. So that's why I'm like, you know, I'm very spiteful that way. But, um, you know, for those who have got maths, like her, uh, you know, it, it, we're very proud that you're here and Thank very you. thankful for the work that you do. Thank you very And I think a lot of you parents, you know, when you had your kids at home and realised when the teacher's saying that your kids are misbehaving, you didn't believe them, now you know that they do misbehave. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, uh, yeah, but, all right, so in terms of the challenges that your members are facing at the moment, apart from the cost of living crisis, you've mentioned, touched on food banks, and offset, is there anything else that, you know, that's being faced? Do you speak to anybody in education, as well as those things which are at the forefront at the moment, mm. as it is with the rest of the country, workload? workload on the back again of Ofsted, what Ofsted expects to happen, which actually doesn't necessarily benefit the children, yeah. it's just a way of holding schools account. If you sit down and you look at what you're asked to do, and you try and drill down into that as to how is that benefiting the children, it's not. It's absolutely not. So how are you helping, you know, how's your union yeah. mem mem helping your members? So we... On, on the ground, we um, make sure that teachers understand that they have a set number of hours that can be directed by the school and technically shouldn't go over those hours. To get our job done, yeah. you absolutely do, but that means you can go home and do that work and do it in weekends instead. We want to lessen the amount of unnecessary work. Um, we're trying to inform our members that actually you have a voice and we all are in our job because of the children. That sometimes gets used against us almost in a way of guilt. Yeah. Why won't we do that? Think of the children. Yeah. We do what we do because of the children. It's not because of the wage. It's not because of the holidays. I mean, we are about, it's our last week of term next week. I've already, in that first week of term, got three meetings booked, safeguarding with social workers over some of my families. I will be in school working. I will have some holiday, I will have some day tonight. I won't have five minutes. How can people join your union? So you go online to the NEU website and it's really straightforward, one click. And if you're a student, a very reduced rate. And if you're a support member of staff, it is reduced rate as well compared to what the teachers pay. Um, it has been an absolute honour and a pleasure talking to you. Um, your role within the uh, NEU? So, um, as I said, I am a full-time educator. I'm SENCO, so that's Special Education yeah. Needs Coordinator. I also am um, a branching district secretary. Um, for one of the districts in the southwest, 
and so I've got a team of reps that I coordinate and I do case work as well. So it's a busy week, every week. So guys, you know, you, you've listened to one of the, the more knowledgeable people out here and you know something, if you're a teacher or a support a member of staff and you need a union, get involved. Your voice will be represented. Your voice will be heard. And more importantly, these guys will be able to carry that voice to the decision makers. So join the union and don't let your voice be stifled out by, you know, people like Offset. <laughs> uh, thanks, guys. Take care. See you there. Thank you.